This is a GameCube. These are also GameCubes. They are all orange, they are all doll 001, they all come from Japan, they look the same, but they are not. This reads games from a micro SD with an adapter that goes in the memory card slot. This reads games from a serial port adapter, the SP2 SD. SD2 SP2. But this doesn't read game at all. And there's more. It's in Japanese. So I can't really use it here. What we have to do is change the language and install PicoBoot. So we can load games, we can load Swiss without any swap disk trick. Coming up on Avukapa Studio. Hey guys, this is Alberto and you are on AVK Studio, an Italian-English-American channel that deals with retro gaming, with transformers, with toys, with living in Texas, I mean, it's all good. In today's video we are working on a GameCube, so what do we need for this build? A GameCube, a Raspberry Pi Pico, cheap, available, find it everywhere less than 10 bucks. An S2 SP2 adapter, that's my preferred choice for loading games. You can use the memory card. I just like to use the bottom port. A micro SD formatted FAT32. A few colored cables for soldering. I use AWG28, but 26 will do. Oh, I should mention, you need soldering skill, but I don't possess it, so we'll go without it. So let's clear the boring stuff first. Let's prepare the Raspberry Pi Pico to run PicoBoot. Is it Pico or Pico? That's okay. You have to download PicoBoot.uf2 from the first link in the description. Then you connect your PicoPi to your computer with a micro USB cable while you keep pressing Boot Cell, the micro button on top. You will see RPI-RP2 as a memory unit and then brutally copy PicoBoot.uf2 inside when you see the green light, you're good to go. Now let's prepare the microSD to run Swiss and launch our games. Format your microSD card FAT32. Get the latest version of Swiss, the software to launch the games. The link is in the description, it's link number two. The file will be something like swiss-rxxxxx.dol. Rename it to ipl.dol and copy it to the root of your SD card. And now the interesting part, let's take the GameCube apart, do some soldering, put it together, cross our fingers and test it. So let's work on this bad boy. This is a doll 001, Japanese, in this beautiful orange color, and it's my model of choice. This guide will also work on a doll 101, but the schematic is slightly different. Why this is my model of choice is pretty simple. Well, I love the orange, and I believe that with the Game Boy or Base, it makes a killer machine. This model has the service port 2, extremely useful with this adapter. As you can see, you can put the SD card right here. And last but not least, the presence of the additional digital AV out. And this is interesting because in case you didn't know, if your GameCube has this port, you can really unlock a much better signal to display it on your monitor. And you can take advantage of that port in basically two ways. I should say three ways. Well, you can buy the extremely expensive component cable that came out from Nintendo and it was almost impossible to get and it's even harder today and very, very expensive. Or you can get one of these. This is a converter from the digital AV out to HDMI. And it's basically a scaler dedicated to the GameCube. Or you can use a component cable with this DAC converter. There's some magic inside here and I'm too ignorant to know what's going on, but it takes the signal in a digital way and it distributes it in an analog way to use the component and the audio. So when you turn it on, obviously the logo is the same, Nintendo GameCube, but then the menu is in full Japanese. What am I going to do now is let it go for 5 to 10 minutes just to heat up a little bit the thermal paste and it's going to be easier to remove it when we get to it. Let's 
Let's start by taking this guy apart. We flip it, four screws. Gently remove the input board and gently pull the ribbon cable. Very easy to ruin this. Now that we have exposed everything here, what we need to do is removing the DVD reader. There are four small screws here in proximity of the memory cards and quite a few more all around. They wanted to make sure that this wasn't flying off. Now that the fan is detached, all you need to do is removing this cable and this should come out fairly easy. Look at that. And there you have it. We don't need this. Well, we do need this, but we don't need this. But we'll put it back when it's time. The next step is removing these six screws that are holding in place the heat sink so we can access to the magic underneath. Now, here is the fun part. You cannot brutally take these apart like I would because there are extremely delicate surface mounted components on this side so you don't want to smash them. So it is better to go in this direction but actually it is better not to go in any direction and just apply a small wiggling wiggle 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 fake it till you make it i'm just showing off some of the words that i learn every day look at that the thermal paste came out well but part of it stayed on this side and part of it stayed on the heat sink so i guess i'm having to do this which is not really the best thing to do I have new thermal past anyway, so whatever didn't come out well, I'm gonna replace it with new ones. I don't know if you guys realize how small is the stuff I'm dealing with. I have to solder this stuff in, in, in here. So let me give you some perspective for the scale of my work. This is Sonic. This is a Dungeons and Dragon dice, Undado. And this is a Lego hot dog. So let's put the Lego hot dog here. This is for the scale of my mission. First thing first, remove the hot dog and give it some surface cleaning, for which I need my best friend, Elsa. So the region switch mode is in theory extremely simple. It's also extremely small, even to explain. Can you guys see R5 and R6? If you, if you bridge R5, the console is in Japanese. If you bridge R6, the console is in English. So Nintendo already thought about this and they still wanted to make the console region locked. Nevertheless, what I am going to do is remove whatever is here in R5 and bypass R6. Now, I have very poor soldering skills and not a lot of experience. And I chose to work on something that I barely can see. On top of that, while I'm doing this, I am commenting with not my first language. So, you guys understand my situation. In order to remove this, there are several ways. One is to use a heat gun, but I'm going to follow the advice of Mr. Rusty Cable, which means take a hot soldering iron, add some solder on it, and then when you have some solder on it, just go around till it comes off. And I think I did it. I believe my resistors in inside this ball of solder. Clean. I love you, Aaron. You're the best. So what I did was adding a little bit of solder to the wire 
and then very gently make the connection. Is it pretty? No. Does it work? I don't know. If I screw it up, we'll, we'll see it later. Let's move on to the Pico boot. I'm trying to follow the color coding or convention that's written on the GitHub or on the guide. So for the ground, it's a convention to use a black wire. So same as before, what I've done is adding some fresh solder to the wire and then come up with a somehow a connection between the two which really doesn't look good at all next is the red wire that goes exactly there as usual I have pre-applied some fresh solder to the tip of my wire This will be the idea. Fold it around the peg that keeps the front panel together and then routing up and then install it here in this area. Now we need to put together the heat sink and for which, as I said before, we need to replace at least one of the pads. I was born in Genova and the mockery about people from my hometown is that, that we are cheap. So because I didn't think I needed to replace the other three, I'm just gonna go with the GPU. Let's put it back together. Looking good. Let's move on. We can actually pretty much reassemble most of the GameCube and later on we'll need to solder these cables according to the schematics provided. As I said, I want to install the Pico in this location with the micro USB port facing this direction. So should I need it to update it in the future, I just take off the top shell and it's gonna be accessible. I've seen people install it like this, but I really don't like it because I don't want the boot cell button to be pressed. So this is gonna be my location. Blue was Mr. GP4. I've sold it already ground in the 3v3. So we need to complete this. What I thought could have been the most difficult weld of all was actually bridging GP6 and GP7 with my yellow wire, but I think it wasn't actually too hard. They look connected. Does it look pretty? Absolutely not. Will it work? I have absolutely no idea but we have come to the point where there's only one way to know. Put the cover on, assemble the front part and give it a try. At least you can't see it from here, but yeah, I like it. Now let's clean this mess. Let's pull up the screen again, connect everything, cross our fingers and see what we have accomplished. Now, we really are at the moment of truth. I've connected my shiny orange controller to the GameCube. He is connected with component cable. 
This is how my final directory on the SD card looks like. As you can see, there's a lot more of what I showed you before because I've also added some Game Boy library and I've added all the files needed to run the Game Boy player without the booting disk. Because first, I don't have it. And second, I doubt that DVD reader can actually read it. Without further ado, let's fire this up. Look at the speed at which this guy is actually booting up my Game Boy Color game, Game Boy Advanced game, GameCube games. And you see this B? That's how it's displayed the homebrew that actually will manage the Game Boy player base, which we will try in a second. For now, I really want to start a GameCube game and I always choose Automodelista. It's one of my favorite. I don't have a memory card, so I won't be able to save, but look at the speed at which this guy boots up. And yes, I want to use progressive mode. Man, I love this game. Okay. Now it's time to try the Game Boy Player Base and a beautiful game, War Cup. You remember I called the homebrew with the letter B? So all you need to do is keep pressing the letter B as you're turning on the console. And there you have. Thank you guys for spending some time with me on Avukapa Studio. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you didn't, please don't like and don't subscribe. But nevertheless, keep growing, but never grow up. Until the next one.